Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Drawing and Talking with me, Freebie Wits, your host. Now before we begin, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Anyways, we're in for another monster-based uh, drawing from Roleplay Repository. This one isn't actually a character in itself, it's a, well, like I said, a monster called the Twisted Cheshire. As the name suggests, it's a uh, twisted version of the Cheshire Cat. Cheshire? Cheshire. Sure. Feels like a tongue twister when I try to say it really quick. The cha cha cat. Yeah, I, I've twisted up the word enough that I feel that it's accurate. Anyways, this character slash monster was the idea of one Mango Necros. Uh, the link will be in the description below. And it's a monster, like I said before. Now, I'm not going to be repeating the prompt verbatim, but basically it's a Cheshire cat crossed with a Prowler demon from Doom, from what I was told. So I actually did look up the Prowler on the internet, uh, came up with the Doom wiki, and based it off that with big mandibles and, of course, referencing the prompt itself. Now, based on that, would it make a good monster in D&D or any other tabletop game? And the answer is absolutely. It's literally a faceless monster. Okay, not literally faceless, it's still got a mouth, and it's technically got a face, but it doesn't have eyes, so it can be a... You can have a horde of these monsters jumping around trying to get at the players. They have claws, they have teeth, it's a generic bad evil monster. Now that said, uh, in the description there, it's mentioned that they're known to stalk down unfortunate people, so there is a degree of stealth there. They're not just mindless killers that run at the enemy just to eat them. No, these guys are smart about it, they're like cats. Uh, hence Cheshire Cat, I suppose. Very generic, scary type enemies that you'd put in a tabletop RPG. Now, could these guys work in LARPs? And the idea of them definitely can. Like I said, stalkerish uh, killer monsters, they, they're just so versatile. They can work in just about any sort of fantasy type uh, RPG, or I suppose certain uh, futuristic things like Doom. So now that we've established that they thematically work in LARP, would they actually work in LARP as a costume? And the answer is no. Now, ignoring the uh, anatomy, we're just assuming that we can do that. Uh, the jaws and such would be very impractical. You may, depending on the length of this video, you may or may not see what I'm talking about right now. But if you can, or if you haven't, just keep it in mind. Now, just imagine having this costume one-to-one -one, uh, replica. Uh, now, try to imagine turning your head leaning downwards, looking down, the, your chin, which is now larger because of the mandible apart, would poke you in the chest. Leaning back might be hard because of how the costume is stretched, or ignoring that, turning sideways, tilting your head, it gets in the way. Lying down, anyone who laughs or cosplays or gets into costumes a lot and has things attached to their face will tell you you cannot move said face or head as much as you'd like to when things are floating off it or attached to it and such like that. It's just very impractical. It doesn't work. And when you're raising your arms to fight and protect yourself as you do in LARP, it just magnifies the problem even more. Uh, cosplayers who just do the photos and stuff, not so bad. It can still be annoying, especially if you're trying to do specific poses. But beyond that, eh, it, it can work. So that's this Twisted Cheshire character, and this is going to be the last monster character I believe I'll be doing. My next character that I'll be drawing for RPR people will actually be, well, characters with backstories and the like. Thank you for watching, please leave a comment, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and uh, most importantly, have a good day. Bye bye.